All right, so thank you, Bobby, for being part of this uh, podcast interview. Uh, I feel like I know you like a brother. And uh, I know I've asked you a lot of these questions, but I wanted to ask you this to get started because a lot of people or some people might not know you as well as I know you. And uh, I wanted to get started with uh, just you introducing yourself. I know you're from what I, my introduce, introducement to you could be that you built a company from zero to a billion. You exited it. So you closed, you finalized the cycle. And then you also are a real estate investor with uh, right now, I think, $350 million of real estate assets. And I know you had more. And, and you just, I really look up to you and like you so much because those are the two things I'm, I'm working on. I'm working on building a billion dollar company and I'm working on building a big real estate portfolio like you have. So uh, uh, can you tell a little bit of, about how you got started to all the people and, and a little bit about you, like your history and how yeah, you started? Dude, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, and, and I too uh, uh, like your company, Albert, and, and, your, and your energy. So thank you. Um, you know, I'm all about um, I know it sounds kind of crazy to most and maybe most can't comprehend it, but it's just with full transparency. I'm all about today. So I'm one that I don't think about tomorrow. I don't think about next month, next quarter, next year. It is literally all about today. And that's where I just, just get so much value out of my day. All these minutes, I normally get about two days when the average person maybe gets only one day because I treat today as if it was, if, I, if you're in sales, the last day of the month, the last day of the quarter, the last day of the year. I treat everything with urgency and, and I'm very effective on how I, I go about doing that. And I, and I think that's one of the, the traits I, I have that enabled me to pick up um, which I'm starting to realize this net worth is kind of a big thing, $300 million. To me, it's really not. Mm -hmm. I'm not a flashy guy, never really been. I'm very confident on who I am, and, and, I, and, I, and I like to be who I am. And I started something with practically nothing, um, failed the third grade, um, left after the ninth grade. Um, I just wasn't good at school, not because I was a difficult individual. I just couldn't comprehend what they were trying to teach me. And I had a lot of questions. And at the ninth grade, teachers used to get very frustrated with me, thinking I was trying to give them a hard time. But in all reality, I didn't understand. I, I couldn't comprehend what they were saying. So I think they were frustrated with me. I was frustrated. And after the ninth grade, I said, this is not for me. And I told my mom. And my mom had zero pushback. Uh, she supported it because I guess she knew maybe my, my strengths and my weaknesses. And um, she just really fueled my strengths and told me I could be anybody I want to be and she always told me make sure as long it's you you could do anything Bobby and, and that's what I've done on a, on a very long journey a, a tremendous amount of uh, challenges struggle uh, my mother was a, a, a waitress for three full-time jobs um, I was a bus boy I mean a beautiful family we had no electricity maybe 50% of the time including no water it was on and off uh, my mom could not afford any furniture for us. It was all rented by a company called rent -a center You just pay it as you go. You never own it. And they used to pick it up. They used to re-deliver it. And I seen that struggle, and I simply just did not like it. And I seen the struggle my mother had during it. And I said, this will never, ever, I will never be exposed to this, or I will fight like hell not to. I know you were uh, hanging out with a few billionaires, uh, mas masterminded some island right yeah ne necker island um uh, richard branson's island in the uh virgin uh uh islands uh he's he's there what i understand about 80 percent of the time i was able to really hang out with this individual and he's just beautiful and um and what he's doing for the world dude it, it's unbelievable talk about scale this guy's all about scale and the lives he's touching richard's worth a little bit over four billion in my personal opinion, he could be easily, he could have easily been worth over 50 billion, but he's not. He, he's in a great state in his life where he's really focused on helping others that are not fortunate like we all are to live in this country and have all these opportunities. So uh, amazing. I, I picked up so much value from him and many others there. When I started, I wanted to make a million dollars so bad. And I had this mentor that was a millionaire. And he didn't help me get to a million, but he helped me get close to it. And then I, I was capped. And then I had to get another mentor that was like at 30 million. And then that mentor helped me get past the million. And then I, 
got a newer mentor so i i upgrade my mentors yep. i know you've taught me something really important which is instead of calling that upgrading your mentors you upgrade your information yes now like you are at a level where where i want to head next to and, and so for example from grant i learned how to invest in real estate i learned how to scale my army uh, my business i learned how to build my army and take risks be courageous and then from patrick i learned how to implement systems uh, and procedures operations and patrick's working on building a, a billion dollar company now you built a billion dollar company from scratch right yep that is correct i used to hate going to school but i this is my kind of school like just taking notes you saw me with my taking all these notes yes, when we were talking right. but um is that kind of how you felt when you were with uh, Richard Branson, or, or how is he, How is Richard Branson? Is he, is he a simple dude? Does he think he's better than everybody? Does he have an ego? Like, how is it to hang out with Richard Branson for that long? Yeah, you know, good questions, man. Uh, I there's something I always say, and you may want to write this down if you haven't heard me say it before. Ego is not your amigo. It, it, it's just remember that ego is not your amigo. I have always learned. I don't know how I learned it, and I guess that's from mistakes, had to be from mistakes. I choose who I decide to listen to, receive information from. That's the power of information. Each of us have that decision where we pick and choose where we want information. Why do we want this information? How's it gonna benefit me? And is this individual or are they the ones to give me this information based on a, a few, um, you know, key points. I always say, you know, you want to surround people and remember this guys, getting wealthy, rich does come in the path of getting wealthy. Everyone's so fixated on getting rich. They don't realize focus on getting wealthy because during that journey, rich does come with a territory and wealth finally shows up. He was everything that I was hoping for. I've been around a few billionaires, fortunate, uh, to be around them and I did get value from each one of them I would say um, three of them I got very little value from a little I got something from it so I, I walked away with value because I'm always certain I want to get freaking value if I'm spending my time with somebody give me value I'm giving you value Richard was probably without a shadow of a doubt I got 110 percent value every minute he was so humble he he was all about the fact of touching many in order to create wealth you got to create wealth for many so you can have massive wealth uh, you, you cannot do it alone if you just do it alone you're gonna be a hamster on the wheel you have to surrender to that and I, I've learned so much from Richard in the short amount of time I, I think I was there for five days I came back you know I was, I was gonna take off one year uh, and, and go on my boat spend time with my grandchildren my beautiful family and and, and give them some attention and give them love. I came back, dude, and in 48 hours, I got this office. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing, but I know I'm gonna be doing something. So right now, I'm all about giving value. That's why I, I decided to do some of this social media stuff. I have zero clue about social media. My son put me on it, and it's only to give good content, good value that people can actually take away that information and do something with it versus looking at a a a, a a a a lamborghini a plane a yacht a fancy watch beautiful suit there's no information looking at these items albert the information it's too much information out there and i think i benefited from digesting the correct information because when you when you're exposed to the correct information and you choose to select this information that you digest because in our subconscious mind, there's so much things are being processed without us knowing and eventually comes out consciously. So I don't know, sometimes it's a little too deep, but uh, you know, based on my personal experience, um, that's how I do it. That's how I do it today. You, you know what's so impressive to me about you is that you have multiple, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I, I just wanna make sure that I'm right, but you have multiple hundreds of millions liquid in the bank. And, and uh, more or less, am I, I have I have I have nine figures cash in the bank and, and yeah. you are one of the most simplest uh, you're the, one of the simplest guys I've met like you don't have to get that one hundred thousand dollar watch or maybe you have one but I haven't seen I, I, I you you're you don't have like the what is it, the Bugatti uh, you have a nice car you have yep. nice watches 
but uh, you you just don't appear like a, anything any the opposite of, of being an arrogant person because it's not me it, you know I'm, I'm so true of who I am and um, and I think that's what helped me create global success happiness wealth financial wealth um, I stay true to who I am where my heart is and I was never one of those individuals that were rude obnoxious angry very difficult to deal with when you're negotiating very I, I created my success on the total opposite f uh, formula being kind respectful determined hungry um you could be successful with with, with those attributes it, 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 and i think it you know that's just you know everyone is just not everyone's so unique we all have different personalities you don't have to be uptight you don't have to be an angry person you don't have to appear to be that in order to get successful because if you're in sales like i have been all my life you're never going to be able to increase your closing ratios you're never going to increase wealth in your life being kind and respectful you get more yeses than no yeah and you've been getting into social media you didn't even have social media you, you don't even need to be on, on social media there's a lot of people that i see on social media that have millions of followers but it, it's kind of funny but it's it's direct like they, they have millions of followers but they have more followers than they have money and they're giving people advice on business on success and and then you have you just got into social media because you love answering messages you answer messages yourself and you told me i just want to help people like somebody with with i mean especially there's a lot of people that have a net worth but you have not only you have it you have a lot of liquid and you have real estate uh investments 350 million plus of real estate but yet you you still answer people's messages you were telling me how touched you are by some of the messages you get and you personally answer them and you told yep. me i just want to help people like like you don't have to do that but that but yet you do yeah man you know coming off of uh, richard branson um I, I told my wife sophie i said for the remaining of this year i just want to give value to others based on my experience and tr I'm, I'm the underdog i have always been the underdog i'm still an underdog that's how i feel and i always root for the underdog and all this year is about giving value my son said well dad you know let's get you a little bit on social media i said you know brandon i i really uh, that's not me i really don't he goes dad you, you can't if you want to touch many try to do that i said well i want to do it softly i'm not asking for no money i don't sell nothing here this is coming out of my heart um, I've learned so much being around an individual just in a short period of time, Richard Branson. You know, growing is so important. If you want to receive, you have to be willing to give. Sharing is caring, man. It's powerful. Be who you are. You could be successful. You don't have to be somebody you're not. Uh, and when you're spending all that energy and all those non-refundable minutes doing that, trying to be somebody you're not, you're just burning time, burning the clock on, on your potential, man. You know, life has no ceilings. Yeah, like it, it really meant a lot to me, like for Driven. Because of social media, I came across uh, you again because I saw you at the first TEDx growth con. And, and then I saw you through uh, Alex's podcast. And, and he, and see with Alex, I wanna share the story really quick. Uh, he approached me, I think a year ago, and he went to our office and he said, I want to do a I want to have you on my podcast. And I looked him up and he didn't have that many followers. He, did, he was just getting started. And, and I said, let's do it. You know, like, let's do it. Uh, he, he seems like a really cool guy. I did it and we just, we stayed in touch. And then three weeks ago, he hits me up. He's like, hey, Albert, guess what? I have this guy, you have to meet him. He'll be perfect for Driven. You guys have to meet. He, you guys are alike and, and this guy's so cool. You got to meet him. He was so excited. And, and by me just saying yes a year ago, this, this came up. And now I, I got to meet you and you said, Albert, I'll, you don't have to pay me. I'll go to Driven. I'll, I'll not only go to Driven, I'll be part of your Friday mastermind. I'll stay for Sunday. And then Sunday we're running out of time and, I, and you have to leave. And then I ask you like, Bobby, like, uh, what time is your plane leaving? And, and you just tell me whenever I wanted to leave. And uh, the, I just yeah. want to tell you, that meant a lot. And, and, you, and you were, like, I'm not going to say the favorite, uh, but you were at least top two, top three, if not number one favorite from the Driven crowd. And, and Danny's right here 
he just told me he, he acknowledges that too so i just want to thank, thank you, you for that thank and uh, a lot of people over 2,000 people there at driven you changed a lot of lives i could tell you that you know and and i'm i easily fall in love with people and at your event albert um i spent so much time with amazing individuals those 87 dollar ticket people and all those that that's where my heart is because i was one of them i still feel like i am one of them and i like to pay attention to them and, and give them value because i know there's bobbies out there um i i practically didn't speak until i was seven years old I mean, wow. I was really, um, and I don't know what happened. I, and and I, the more I'm doing these podcasts and the more I'm growing in life, I I'm really realize how important my mother has been and how important she is. And, and that's some good value I'm getting out of this thing. I came from Richard Brand. I'm realizing more and more it was all my mom. Yeah. And, it, and, and can you talk a little bit more about your mom? Because I know like my mom, I see her, I see my mom, my dad. I think you, you met him. Yes, I did. Beautiful and people. And yes. I see them and I know that they're not going to be around yeah. for too many years. They're, they might not be around. Who knows? Like, I can't control that. And, and sometimes, uh, and I'll be completely transparent, because my, 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 that's how I am. But my dad and my mom, I love them so much. But sometimes they, they watch the news a little bit too much. Uh, and uh, they hear rumors from other people, or they, or they're they're worried about everything. Yeah, yeah. Like they're worried about me doing driven. They're worried about me starting the business. They're worried about me investing in real estate. They're worried about uh, my daughter or me or b being in the public. Uh, things happening. Yeah. So that kind of like sometimes it's it, it, it. I don't like that feeling. Yeah. And and but then I'm like like my parents just they they love you, but they they love you the way they know how to love. So yeah. like. And I, I don't want one day to be like, you know what? I should have, could have uh, spent more time with my parents. Is there something that you could give advice to people on like your mom, your dad? And, and yeah, and you know, that that's something I'm still working on because I'm all about, you know, full transparency. You know, I'm crazy about my non-refundable minutes so much that I like I said, I normally get two days when the average person maybe gets only one day. This is something I'm still working on. And even as, I, I, as I'm talking right now, Albert, I am not one of those sons, believe it or not, it may, you may probably be, be surprised where he picks up mom on Wednesday, takes her to lunch. Maybe he picks her up on Sunday to take her to church or maybe he brings a dozen roses or he just comes by to kiss his mom. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. I need to work on myself on that. I don't do it like I should be doing it. And even though I'm saying right now, I'm realizing how important my mother has been in my life that's something I'm going to start doing. It's not because I didn't love my mother. I, lo I just been on this, this massive, I, I always get value from my minutes and I created wealth by that. But I'm realizing my mom may not only, she may only have 10 Christmases. Yeah. She it may be only 10 summers. I see my mom. And when you, when I started thinking about that and someone mentioned that and, and this individual reminded me of that a couple of months ago and I'm still struggling how to process it and actually take action. And, like today I put on Instagram, you know, it's so important to take action. So that shows you somebody even like me giving advice out there and telling you what works and how to create millions and millions of dollars. Uh, I even fall victim to ignoring some of this stuff that I should be paying attention to. So that's why I work on myself every morning for one and a half hours. You know, we're all human. We're going to go back to the same patterns. We just got to be aware of our weaknesses. And, and my weakness is I want to create value, 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 value. But again, I'm kind of missing out with my mom's situation. Yeah. So I'm still figuring that out. And, and, and I know like dad and the mom, how important the mom and the dad are. But like uh, speaking about family, like what about brothers and sisters and uncles or aunts or close friends growing up that you, you loved but uh, maybe we're holding you back. And then at some point of your life, like you, like you just had to eliminate a few of them and then, and, and then your life changed for the better. Uh, I mean, that happened to me, but, but um, how, how did you ever deal with uh, toxicity uh, with not only close friends, but family members? Man, I, I've always said it, it's sensitive topics, family, family, family. Uh, just imagine there's 14 or 15 brothers and sisters I have. My dad had 11 children before he had his uh, next crew, me and my brothers. My mom was 27. My dad was 50 when he had me. I have a lot of cousins. I have a lot of nieces, nephews. I have a lot of everything. And they're beautiful people, man. They're beautiful people. And, and it's not because I don't love them. I love them all. 
but I only have a certain amount of minutes in my day. And in order for me to create a life for my legacy when I'm way gone from this earth, it's going to take managing these minutes correctly. And I cannot be distracted. I can't fall victim to gossip, drama. I, 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 I don't have many friends. I know a lot of people, but I don't have many friends. My friends are really, there. it's seven people in my crew. Uh, Brandon, his girlfriend, Priscilla, her husband, my two grandbabies, and me and Sophie, my wife. Uh, that could be eight. That's all I hang around with because having a lot of people in your life, it's like a full-time job. It's a lot to manage. So think about your capacity. How can you do it? And, and, and you can get distracted. There's a lot of, lot of uh, personalities in my family. There's a lot of uh, bipolar. There's uh, schizophrenic. There's uh, uh, drugs. I mean, we all have them in our family. It is what it is. Um, those are circumstances. But what you do about it is the most important thing. And what I choose to do about it is, hey, I'll catch you on the rebound. But right now, I got to do what I got to do. I don't, I don't tell them that, but that's what I'm telling myself and that's how I behave and that's what I actually do. Yeah, so, so it's normal because I think a lot of people deal with this and I think a lot of people get stuck because they take care of everybody else but themselves. And, and uh, something that I've learned that has worked for me and uh, I don't know how you feel about this is um, do you believe that you need to work on yourself and take care of yourself before you're able to take care of your granddaughters your, and everybody else? 1000%. If you're in, if you own a business, you're looking to expand or you're looking to grow that business, you have to be, you're, you are the most important asset. And if you don't have it right, and if you don't have outside your place of business, your place of work, whatever you're doing, and if you don't have those core values outside that, that place that you go to to earn money, you're never truly going to be successful because you're distracted. Something is distracting you out there. And then when you come back in, you're still distracted with that misery. And it's so important to really get your core values. The same core values need to align outside your business, outside your career and inside your business and career. And I know that's a lot to take in, but that is the reality if you want to scale. And scale is all about wealth. You cannot become wealthy if you're not able to scale. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally uh Agree. You know, and one thing I want to touch on family members, you know, a lot of questions have been asked so far, a lot of awesome messages, man. And I can't help myself to respond to each one of them because when someone says, thank you for this information, I can't help myself. No, you're welcome. Um, family members, how do I do it, Bobby? You simply don't do it. You just simply distance yourself with a lot of kindness and respectful and a lot of smileness because if you try to explain it, you're just gonna be caught up in this soup that is just now even more of a distraction. So start distancing yourself. And when they call you, hey, Bob, you haven't been calling me, what's wrong? I mean, do, do I smell? No, man, I'm just so busy, man. I'm really, in, you know, I, I have some new goals and I'm just off to some, dude, I love you so much. You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm sorry if you feel that way, but I'm just rocking and rolling. Bobby, a person like you, like you work on yourself so much. And every year you're like an unrecognized person compared to last year. Like, I, like you just get better and better and better and better. Like I've, I've noticed some, uh, and, and quite, quite, a, quite a lot of times in, in the past maybe months and the last, the last year for say. And I talk and hang out with people that I used to hang out with 10 years ago. And I hang out and I see family members that I haven't seen in a long time. And then I have conversations with them and, and, it's, and, and, the, and the conversations don't flow. Like, I don't know if you know, know what I understand, but, it, but it's like, I, I think, and, and like, once again, guys, excuse me for being just really transparent, but, but I am just like, did I just get way, way, way smarter in these last few years? Or did people just like, just get a little bit slower and, 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 and or both or, or well, I, yeah, it happens to me all the time. And, and, and there, you know, again, it, I, it, it's growing. It's not the fact that you're getting smarter, Albert. What I personally think, based on my experience, you're growing. And when you grow, you scale. You're on to new information that is giving you some sort of reward on how you feel, what's coming at you in life, what you're building, what you're creating. 
And it's not that anybody's smarter than the next. I, I, again, I failed the third grade. I just finished the ninth grade. I didn't comprehend school. I didn't understand what was being taught to me. So I don't think I'm smart. What I think I, I, I do really good, I surrender to growth. I want to always grow each day because I understand when you grow, you're scaling. And if you're looking at my hands, imagine this, your bank account. This is what I have experienced by having this type of behavior, not mindset. It's the behavior, it's the routine. And I started getting rewarded for it. And then I just kept, want, I just needed to continue growing. But it's very important, watch your growth because sometimes people wanna go from here to here in 24 hours and you can't do that. This is slow growth and you don't pivot to the next stage of growth until you maximize the full potential of the stage you're at. I don't care who's telling you this, uh, what courses you're paying for, what information you're paying for, or even if it's for free. Growth happens over long periods of time when you work on it. Don't try to think this is gonna be 24 hours that you're gonna be a millionaire. It's, it's so important, and, and, and that's the reason I'm trying to give good content out here to remind people, you too can have and have more than I have if you just follow these type of patterns that I actually did, um, I didn't create my wealth by telling people this. Yeah. I created my wealth actually practicing it, and this is the first time I'm just sharing out of my pure heart this year. Yeah. Uh, what do you What do you do with people like even if their family like like if they're if they're holding you back like if they're if they keep telling you things that you don't want to hear like 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 we we're talking about gossip and and bad things and and just that kind of stuff like what do you what would you say do to that you have to just simply do this one step it's very easy distance yourself start walking away slowly distance yourself you will find by distancing yourself you will replace that individual or individuals with better information that can you can benefit from so just kindly distance yourself because for example uh, ever since we started talking this morning when i, I just I, I landed this morning, I texted you, I'm here and this and that, I couldn't sleep on the plane, I told you about a long story, like that's why I'm wearing my hat and everything, uh, came straight to you, it was just fire, conversations, like fire conversations, fire conversations, fire conversations, energy, high energy, and we, we spoke about a little tox toxic little topic, yep. Yep. And, and did you notice how it kind of drained us? Absolutely. And then really right now we're like kind of yep. picking it up again. Ima imagine, you know, just having 10 of those. Yeah. It's, it'll drain you, it'll keep you stuck. And, and a lot of people ask me this, so I just wanted to hear it from you because I tell people, hey, sometimes you just gotta distance yourself even from that. And the quicker you distance yourself and not think about it because if you're, if you're overthinking about it, how am I gonna do it? Oh my gosh, what are they gonna say? You're, you're overthinking, you're never gonna make the decision actually doing it. So what I would do, is just distance yourself. So you, you have your cell phone, that's the, probably the biggest distraction I see, and you see somebody calling you, and you know that this person, that when they call you, it's only to complain, gossip, um, just hear the same information you've been hearing for for the last year, and you even say, you even look at it and say, man, I don't wanna take this call, but yet you do take the call. So what you can do in that example, don't take the call, that's why you have voicemail, and you don't have to return the call. Yeah. And, and now, uh, talking about business, uh, you're the first person that I know personally and, 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 and a friend that started, that built a, a company to a billion dollars. Like, uh, how was it from the beginning? How, how, do you have any tips for that? Because I know, I know it requires employees. It requires uh, salespeople. Now, these people, like if we sometimes feel a little down in the mornings. Like imagine how, uh, I, c I can only imagine how our salespeople feel, how our employees feel. So like to build a company, was it like what, how'd you build your leadership? Like do you, did you have morning meetings? Did you wake them up? Like, because Mondays people hang out with, with toxic people on weekends. Some people like to go out and, and, and have brunch on Sundays. They come back Mondays. Yep. Family member did this to the other family member. They watch the news. And, and the, how's the process of building a company to a billion when you have all these obstacles and all these challenges? Leadership, leadership, leadership. If you want to create wealth, you got to be surrounded by better people than you. You cannot be the smartest person in the room. 
You, your job is to find people that can do it better than you, that can lead better, that know more than you, you have to surrender. A good leader surrenders with that value proposition. Um, and without leadership, you're never gonna be able to scale. And I found out in the beginning of the stages of the company, we were just moving and we were just in a survival mode. Yeah. A lot of small businesses, that's what it's at. And I, I highly recommend being in that survival mode. So again, I'm gonna repeat that, it's very important. If you're a small business owner, don't get fancy and dancy and overthink this whole model. Very important because you'll, you'll, you, you, you will sink before you take off. Be in that survival mode, but then when you start recognizing, okay, I'm beyond that survival mode, now we're maintaining, that is a time to start thinking about leaderships because leadership will change in different stages. We didn't recognize that. We, we never changed leadership in different environments, even when we pivoted to new stages because those leaders didn't know anything about the new stage. And the hardest decision was to say, well, you're no longer gonna be a leader. Uh, we're bringing in new leadership. And once we started doing that and, and, and upgrading to new information that these leaders had, and even if you have a, a, a employees and leaders in your, in, in your company, it's your job as a leader to make sure they are upgrading their information um, and not just having the old information because now it's changing, man. This is changing by the hour uh, because of technology. But leadership was the biggest reason I am personally worth $300 million, me and my wife is because of leaderships. We, leadership, we surrounded ourselves with better. In the beginning, I wanted to do it all. No one could do it better. No one could do it faster. No one could do efficiently. No one, no one, no, no one. And then I started realizing by understanding, okay, the growth is not pivoting as fast as it used to. What am I doing? And then you start surrendering saying, you know what? I am not the smartest person. I'm a ding dong at this stage. So, so you need people people without people you're not i don't care how strong technology is without people you're not going to scale and without making others you're never going to ever create massive wealth and once we had that model once we understood as a business owner we were fixated on making our internal company the people extremely successful financially they felt great we just paid attention to this population so you didn't build a billion dollar company, just Bobby, right? No, 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 no. Can you share a little bit about that? Because I, I know there's a lot of people that they want to be like the CEO and the Popeye and, and it's awesome, and then have, man. And then have 30 topic. employees there and, 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 you know, and just, just hammer yeah. them down. And then there's people that, uh, that, uh, have partners and, uh, share the equity, share the wealth. Uh, like what's the difference and how did you do it compared to how other people that wanted to be the Popeyes? You know, which is great. Let's just say, for example, you have a high level individual that is bringing on a lot of revenue for the company. And man, they or he or she, man, so awesome. Why don't we get this individual to now be the new leader and pivot us? Because if he can teach others what he or she or they do, man, we can have a thousand of these individuals. Makes sense. We found out that this beautiful type of profile was horrible as a leader. A leader, in, in vice versa example, a leader was horrible at that position, but for some reason had the skill set and information to lead in order to where we're, we want to pivot to. An, an owner, an owner can be a horrible CEO, but a great owner. An, a, a great CEO can be a horrible owner, but a fast fascinating CEO. So just think about the power of bending and compromising to the reality that you're not great at everything. And, and that happened to me, by the way, I knew my skill sets. Um, uh, uh, I, I put myself in a position to help the company, not hurt the company. Um, uh, I, I was always uh, heavily involved in revenue sales and the whole organization we have when I exited about 550 incredible people that I've personally, if you're watching this BHG years, man, thank you so much for impacting my life uh, because of each and every one of you, um, you, you thank you, thank you. So like, like what, I'm, what, I'm, what me and Syl are, are, are working on and want to do is we want to share the wealth. So we want people that earn it, people, first people that want it and then people that earn it, qualify for it. We want to start spreading equity 
so that we could all build a billion dollar company and exit like you did. Uh, now, a lot of people don't understand that concept, but for example, you built a billion dollar company with help of a lot of people and you were, was it 17% or what was the percentage that you exited on? Um, the first one I exited, uh, I sold 10% of my ownership stake based on $250 million valuation. A year later, I sold another close to 7% of my personal ownership at a $600 million valuation. And then I finally sold 17% uh, just a couple of months ago based on a billion dollar valuation. So all in all, about 230 million plus. 230 million. So it, it's so like about 23% total? Like if we say- I, I owned it all 33.3. There was three 33. founders 3. and each of us owned equal so, thirds. So, that, so that's like, that's what I want. Uh, I think that's important for people to understand because- And during that process, we were making a lot of people with, that helped us get there. Yeah. They, we included them in a lot of that celebration and a lot of them continue compounding their wealth because of so there's a this lot model. of there's a lot of millionaires and future multimillionaires. yes correct possibly a billionaire if the company keeps going. incredible we have such a culture there man we have built a dna that is unbreakable and i challenge any business owner if you're starting a business you have a small business a medium even if you have a large business the culture the dna is so critical, especially in this environment now where the employment market is so darn tight. Um, if you're hiring somebody, uh, make sure they fit the, the culture, the core values. You gotta get some core values. If you don't have core value, guys, you gotta work on it. And if you get a core value, core values within an hour, you haven't worked on it. It normally takes about maybe two weeks to come up with core values. And they should be three to four core values, no more than that. Um, so can, can you share the core values that you you guys believed in or, yeah, or did, it, did you create them or what the no we, again um the three founders my brother i and al we went out because we, we 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 heard about this core value situation and okay how do we get core values so instead of us making it up and winging it we hired somebody to give us this information guide us uh to understand the information and it took us a quite of a long time to realize what are the core values in our company and how do we want to cascade that down to our 500 plus employees because they're the face and voice to the customers and um you know it all depends on your industries you know i always say the best businesses are the following this is where you want to invest in this is where you want to be in if you're a business owner or looking to be in business does your product or service have a huge need not a need does it have a huge need do you have a huge solution and does it have huge amount of scale? I Meaning, is it scalable to just to Mars? And then number four, if if, three, if you say yes to all three, do we have the leadership to hit all the targets in order to maximize its full potential? Very important four things. And how you get there, guys, if you, you come up with your core values and you can find it online, there's a lot of good free information about company core values and, and, and spend time on it. Don't rush it. Don't cheat yourself during that process. It's, um, you know, and once we understood it, Albert, we started really believing in it. And the only way you believe in it is really get into the core of what your core values as to a company. Because if not, you're going to screw it up and you're never going to be part of scale. And it, it, scale is an absolutely, you can't skip scale and get wealthy. You, you just, you can't do it by yourself. Yeah. And quick question, because uh, you're so intense all the time so from, from when I saw you this morning, that like you're intense, intense. You, you're going to hop on two more meetings after this. You have to go pack. You're leaving on a two month world trip. Uh, with with monks, right, and and yeah. doing a bunch of Dubai and monks and doing all these things, like like, do you ever feel exhausted at all, or or? Um, I would say ninety percent of the time, no. Ten percent of the time, I do. And when I do feel exhausted, is when I'm not around activity. It's kind of weird. I I can't stay still. Um, you know, for example, I, I'm leaving tomorrow, uh, for a two month. Um, trip to seven countries visiting dubai visiting africa i'm going to do silverback gorillas two other type of safaris then we go to the maldives which by the way may not even be around in 15 20 years um and then we go to singapore and then we go to vietnam a week with a monk um at the amman and then a week after that in thailand doing the same curriculum and then a week in cambodia and i haven't even packed um, I, I, that reminds, that reminds I, me of, of I myself. I just want to fit every minute. I want to get my two days today 
And I want to give value. I've committed, Albert, that um, the little I know about social media was kind of crazy. Sometimes I'm videoing myself and, and I'm not even realizing I, I didn't press the button or, you know, <laughs> I do it all the time. And um, I just want to give value all this year. I want to give this energy with no motives, all good intent. I'm not asking. If you don't like my information, I highly recommend don't spend a non-refundable minute on it. Uh, delist me on however that works. Just get me off and get information that you can in tune that benefits you. Um, and that's what I want to do all this year. 2020, I have no idea. I'm looking to invest in young companies. I'm looking for Bobby Castro's. I'm looking for, does it have a huge need? Does it have a huge solution? Is it scalable? And I want to see how strong that Bobby Castro is. So I guess I'm not missing that many marbles in my head. Uh, nope, you're on the right track. No, dude. So uh, it would be a good time to comment, guys, if you want Bobby to continue his social media because you were thinking that you're not sure of 2020 if you're going to keep it going. You know, I'm falling in love with the people. Um, you know, uh, they just got a new website, bobbycastro.com. Uh, my Instagram is official Bobby Castro. Um, I respond to every comment. I res these, this is me personally. I respond to every message. Uh, because that's how much my heart is so close to, to, to helping everyone that just needs a little more information other than getting so excited. I'm so excited. What do I do now? That is the most important information. What do I do? Yeah. Now, just three quick topics that I want to touch before, before we end this. Uh, number one, really important, real estate. Uh, what was your, your first deal? Did you start small or did you start big? Are you, are you, uh, uh, are you collecting money? Um, from investors to uh, to invest in your portfolio because I know you have a lot, you have a, a big uh, real estate portfolio a lot of multi units so uh, how do you feel about real estate yeah, most yeah. importantly how did you start and is it okay to start small or do you have to start thirty units hundred units what what do you feel about that I love that question I, this is very strong in my heart I started with eleven units um, I could have started more than 11 units, but I started from ground up because I made mistakes in other businesses and I learned my lesson. Um, I am one to tell you, I don't care how much money you have, how much little money you have, please start small because you don't want to skip the process of information. Um, you're not a passive investor. A passive investor is when you give someone your money and you could be one of those passive investors where you don't care about the information and how to do it and how to scale, how to create wealth. And that's cool. Then you, then you invest in those funds. I have never raised any money in my, my main business when I exited for a billion dollars. Uh, I have $330 million worth of multifamily apartments, no raises from nobody, all me and my wife's money, um, including all the other uh, uh, GP stuff I have. It's all our money. We have never raised money because we were so busy making money. It's not called stack and rack. I stack as much cash. Well, Bobby, I only have a job. You know, how do I get you? Get a second job. Get a third job. That's how you start that. Um, but start small. Please start small. I know maybe other people think different and maybe you get impatient. And I understand. I've been there. I started with 11 units, Albert. Yeah. And I didn't go from 11 and I didn't go to 100. I went to 11 and I even think I went to six. And then I went to eight. I lived in this space for a long time and I picked up so much value. This one portfolio, I picked up so much value of information and on top of it, huge cash flow. And on top of it, I sold that portfolio for $17 million net profit in 36 months. Just, just that. And that helped me receive this information. And I took that and I scaled it. You guys see, you could start with four units, 11 units. Small, small. And then you get, how long did it, how many years did it take you to get to an $80 I, million I, dollar deal? Um, even, even when I had the money and I, I could have pivoted quickly, but from my learning lessons, I knew if I skipped the friggin' process of getting maximum information for the stage to know how to do it on every levels, then I pivoted maybe three years after that, I started going, going larger. Um, and, and it helped me a lot because if it wasn't for this information, I probably would have made a lot of big mistakes. Yeah. And you know, one thing that I noticed about you that's really clear. Uh, you, you, first of all, you're, you're young. You're Thank young. You, dude. you look even younger than your age. Thank you. And, and what, you say, what you say about uh, just re being active all the time, like you, just, you always want to be moving around. Yeah. I think that keeps you younger. And, and, like, and that sometimes, I, I mean, obviously, like, I'm nowhere near your net worth, but we're always super busy that sometimes we have a little bit of extra money that we want to go and shop and spend it a little bit. Seal wants to go shopping. We don't have time for that because we just don't want to make time for that because we're so busy yep. being so productive. 
And then we find ourselves like, damn, we're not even, we're saving a lot of money because we're just staying productive and we don't even have time to go spend it. And, and, okay. and I think the production is a, a big reason why you, why you just feel and look so young. Like you have so much more energy than a lot of 18 year olds. Thank you, man. And, and because I keep getting rewarded by life. It's like, I have like, does no one see what is, I, I feel like I, I just keep getting all these bullets to me and I keep, it's like taking a shovel yeah. And putting it in the damn truck. I just, and I, it's like, how do you not keep doing it? Awesome. Uh, so maybe next time you can share a little bit about your, the, your, your formula for, for getting good deals on real estate. Because I know that's a little more, more complex. But uh, uh, one and, and, and I want to touch on that really quick. Guys, if you're in real estate like I am, it's one of many different sectors I'm in. I have other investments. Adjust with the market. If your underwriting is this and the the market is this very cool if you're underwriting like this and the market just just is adjusting a little bit you have to be adjusting your model pay attention to the market you can make money in down markets middle markets and high markets you have to be aware information is so powerful albert that everyday markets are changing you got to be in tune you got to be in the reality of markets yeah. and i know something really important that you you work out monday through friday about one hour a day. Yep, in the morning. And then Saturday and Sunday, you don't work out. Yeah, I do. I, I get up five in the morning. I work on myself for at least an hour and a half. I get so much done uh, on a, var a lot of different levels. And then I, I, my, 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 my trainer, the squat doctor, follow him on Instagram. He's very cool. He's Kiko Alonso, the NFL linebacker's brother. I, I hit the gym for one hour. His job is to completely just dominate me. Yeah. Let me crawl out of there. I, I take a shower, I get right to this office, dude, and I come here to make you money don't, you don't and waste give time. value. Yeah, you don't waste time. And are, do you want to mention about, you mentioned last time about people that are starting up companies, if they need some yes. help? Yes. Um, you know, uh, and this is something I'm thinking about, and it was just recently I was thinking about it, um, really at the Driven Conference, and I was speaking to a very cool individual, one of the speakers behind stage. In 2020, I may or may not, um, no promises, but... If I find entrepreneurs that have those three needs, um, do they have a product or service that's in need? Do they have a huge solution and it's a scalable? And if they fit the traits of a good leader, a good entrepreneur has t tenacity, it's just not gonna give up. I may be willing to look at being an investor in this b young business um, and more so give value to the business to help grow. I do invest in private equity, uh, but I, I'm starting to realize there's some awesome individuals that are messaging me that are so hungry, so so vulnerable, and some of them have interest in businesses. I don't know how much of it, but that's something I may be looking at in 2020 because I, I, I do like, of course, making money, and there's no greater return sometimes than private equity. Yeah, well, Bobby, Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I want you to just let people know where they could follow you. What's your, what's your favorite platform for? Uh... Uh, right now they're working on it. The, the, the Instagram is official Bobby Castro. There's a website, uh, bobbycastro.com they're working on. They're, they're working on different social media outlets. Um, and, and again, guys, if you choose to follow me with my information, it's coming from the heart with good intent. If you don't like the information I'm giving, man, delete me, value your minutes somewhere else. Love you. I'm going to post all the information below so you guys follow Bobby. And if you like the information too, share it with your family members, the, the ones that you're distancing yourself. Maybe they can use some of my information to them. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, dude.